in a minute. Morning world. Welcome to 22nd of September, 2021. Um, brief update on the build. All the felt is now on. Um, yesterday the plumbers got in. Um, they were a day or so later than they intended, but that wasn't the plumber's fault. I will just say that the plumber was messed about by another client. He couldn't get here, but anyway, so most of first fix plumbing is now in. Shower, sinks, heating, stuff he's back next week along with the sparks who would do uh first fix electric as well um yeah we're getting there today i've been asked by the builders to sort of loiter around a bit because they want some help to get the roof tiles on so i think that's the plan for later today so later it is going to be a bit more on the house so those of you that are fed up with house build videos and stuff like that and it's not a farming channel anymore and blah 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 sorry but at the moment, this is taking up my time. That down there, although there is stuff to do, is not taking up my time. Where was I? Before I was interrupted by the phone. Oh yeah, um, for those of you that are a bit concerned about you know, the channel not being very farmy, um, the, the stock that I have here, all my livestock, so the sheep, the ewes, breeding ewes are there, lambs in the field next door, the cattle are down there. I can see everything from the house. I can, um, I've got a telescope in there, so I can watch everything. I don't have to spend a terrific amount of time with the stock, because I can see them. Uh, the stock over at the farm, my dad visits them every day. I don't have to go over there. So the thing is, there's not a lot of farm stuff going on this time of year. And that is why we chose this time of year to do that so I could concentrate a bit more on that. Um, the barn build that will progress as soon as we've got the concrete panels. Um, I've got floors to do, I've got pipe stuff to do, um, hooking up water tanks and stuff like that. All that's got to be done but I want to do that after the panels are in. So, so there is more farm stuff to come but right now uniquely for this year my time is being consumed a lot with with this it's a big investment for us and yeah i want to know what's going on and i also want to record what we're doing for this for the future because i could be looking back at this in 10 15 years time and i can oh i can remember doing that and i can i don't remember that i do remember that remember that and of course it's to keep me mum updated so for those of you that are saying oh well it's not farming enough well it probably won't be for a couple more weeks I should think so if you want to take a sabbatical and disappear for a couple of weeks or forever that's that's up to you um, but as far as the farm's concerned it's still here it's still running we're still doing stuff it's just that right now is a quiet period which like I said is the reason we chose now to do that okay so now I've got that off my chest again so because I'm getting more and more messages saying, oh, it's not a farmy channel, it's an opening parcels and house building channel. Well, for a couple of months, yeah. It is. All right, you're free to go. That's a bit tidy, isn't it? I put the flail in the other day before I put the muck spreader on. Um, and as far as the muck spreading is concerned, uh, we've got a big pile to get rid of over there. But right now, the cattle are still grazing the ground that I want to put it on. So the muck this year is going on the bottom right hand ground. I topped that off a week ago. Uh, but the cattle, although they've got that and the golf course, they're preferring to spend their time out there right now. So while they're happy grazing that, a bit daft for me to chuck muck all over it. So as soon as they start getting bored of that piece of grain they're out of it, then we'll be in there with the muck spreader as well. But that will also be determined by if I've still got the hedge trimmer on or if I've even put the hedge trimmer on by then, because we've got 
all of our hedges to do. Um, I've got the hedges, all the roadside hedges at the other farm to do, and I've got a couple of local folks who want me to do a bit for them as well. So I don't advertise the fact that I get the hedge trimmer on too much because I never get the blinking thing taken off if I ain't careful. So for me, the hedge trimmer goes on a tractor if I'm lucky a month on, month off again because I've got other stuff to do. So yes, I could use the 695 for more things. I could. But I just prefer the MXU. So, okay. Right then. I've got to go and deliver some firewood. So I've had a few comments with regards to radio mic. Um, as you know, at the moment, I've got it all wired up to my cap. So microphone's under the peak there, which keeps it out of the weather. And the transmitter sits on the back, which means if I'm looking at you, you can't see me most of the time, or I'm not going to see just a the speck there. Um, the sound is definitely clearer, but I still find it a bit boomy. I don't know if that's just my voice, or echoing off the peak, or quite what it is, but um, the Movie Maker program I'm using at the moment um, doesn't have like a graphic equaliser. I can't alter the sound on it. Uh, the other program I have does, but my computer won't run it, it's too slow. Unfortunately, um, our computer guy who was going to build something for me, uh, well, let's just say he, he couldn't do it. Yeah, we'll, we'll say no more. Right, okay. Poor old Lander, I haven't been out for a run for a week. You're not going to go very far today, are you? I reckon the forks are a little bit too far apart. Not going to get that in a pallet. Am I? I greased up the back panel on here, and if anything, it's um, it's too slippery now. There you go. I knew you were close. There's a couple of belt bag loops there from the bag underneath. I don't want to pick them up as well, so gently does it. I think that's got it. Yeah, we're free. So for those of you that don't already know, this is how I deliver my logs. Basically, when we process everything, it goes straight into the bag, 
put on a pallet. The idea being is I never touch it again after that. Um, apart from recovering the bag, that is the last time I touch the bag because it's all done with the pallets, pallet forks on the skid steer. Um, another good thing with the pallet is I want the bag, when I tip this off, I want the bag to tip upside down. Now, it took a little bit of trial and error to work this out, but what I do is, cunningly, this little short piece of rope here, my carabiner, it's literally tucked around the pallet, which means that the pallet will slide down to about there and then stop. So the other end of the pallet's there, which means the bag starts tipping at about there. And if I get it just right and the ground's about level, I can normally tip that bag off of here, upside down. Pallet stays in the truck. All I've got to do is pull the bag off, which is never that easy, but it's doable. Chuck it back under the pallet, come home. So, right, I have got a couple of nice new ratchet straps to secure that with, but they're at the house, so we'll go and get them. This bag's only actually going about a mile and a half up into the town. It's actually going to Dave, our builder's big brother, Simon, who I went to school with. In fact, he was in my tutor group at school, so I've not seen him for a while, but he asked if I could deliver some today because he had to wait in today because the plumber's going to, not my plumber, well it might be, a plumber is going to his house to do some plumbing. Yeah. So once again, this isn't exactly agricultural farming, cow, sheep, pigs, goats, chickens, whatever else activity, but this is one of the ways that we earn our living through this. I mean, this was never a big farm. It was never ever going to pay. As in, when we started this, this was a 28 acre farm. It was never ever going to pay to build that house and rear four kids just on 28 acres. Unless I covered the whole lot in poultry pens or intensive pigs, not doable really. So, or growing illegal substances, that would probably have done it. But again, that's illegal. Uh, so this is one of these reasons we stick with the tree surgery. So we've got tree guys go out every day, um, create an income through tree work, uh, which I'm quite well qualified in. Um, and through our waste products, we recycle them. And this is one of the ways we recycle our waste products, by creating fuel. So that's been in the barn for a couple of years. I haven't got to put a moisture meter on that, because I know, I know that's under 20%. So, yeah, um, Farmer P, I am a farmer. That's my first love. But unfortunately, my first love doesn't pay all the bills. My second love, the countryside trees and tree work, that's what pays the bills. Oh, yeah, speaking of presents, this turned up yesterday. I did get a message to say a shovel, a long-handled shovel was coming because someone took pity on me using a short-handled one. Um, we'll find employment for it. It's heavy, so in compared to the short-handled shovels that I'm used to, it's heavier. But yeah, I'm sure we will find we'll find employment for it. I'm not sure what that is in there. I've got to hide it for the tree guys because they'll steal that. It was pretty. Is it long enough? Oh, not quite long enough. Oh well, I'll find another job for it. I've got another job for it. Okay. Oh well. So much for that cunning plan. Do you see that squirrel? He's just gone up the cherry tree. He's there, you missed him. It's a squirrel. Oh, she 
you missed the squirrel. Look at her little face. I bet that's quite nice out there. Right, guys didn't get their toast this morning because they went out shopping with my credit card. So Mrs. P has just come back with that. I reckon that'll make up for it. Ooh. One of them's mine, mine. <laughs> yeah, she's making the coffee now. Yeah, so, oh, do you want me to, oh. Table, we'll Drop, <sighs> hang on. That's right, one, two, three, four, yeah, that's one for me and two each for you. I'll tell your wife, although she'd probably know anyway. <laughs> it's been an eventful day. I've not recorded much of the day, but plenty has gone on. Uh, do you remember the issue we had with the dumper seat wasn't being big enough and didn't fit? Well, James, the very nice chap who gave it to us, came back today and said, I'll have the old one back and I bought this one for you and he's actually got another one. So it's even in matching yellow. So, so it looks like we will be sit fitting a seat after. So thank you, James. It was really, really uh, kind you to do it. Uh, he stayed, had a cup of coffee with me, spent another half an hour or so having a conversation. He's a very interesting chap, had a very interesting life. Um, not my place to share his life with you, but um, yeah, very, very grateful. So on the building front, be interesting to see what this comes out like because I got the microphone back up in there again and it is quite windy on the building front before I run out of battery uh, all the felt on this side of the extension is now complete um, and the lead work has been put at the top that's more or less done not quite quite there but more or less done but this afternoon Dave Andy and myself mainly Dave and Andy I just helped by handing tiles up have got the east side of the building now covered in double Romans, farmhouse red. So we are getting there. Hopefully tomorrow we'll do the west side of the roof. Uh, Dave reckons we're about 30 tiles short. Um, but what we'll do, we'll get most of them on tomorrow and then we'll just see what we're short by and just go and get what we need, hopefully. Once the tiles are on, we've got floorboards to go in. Once the floorboards go in, then we've got the 100 mil insulation to go up into the roof space. And we're kind of getting on then. Uh, second fix, electrics next week. I'm assuming once the insulation's in, we'll have building inspector back out to do the inspection. I think that's, I think that's the next, next visit is on insulation to make sure there's enough. Uh, yeah, yeah, we're definitely, definitely getting there. Right. Next. You got, a, you got a parcel there, Mum. Do you want to? Oh, another box. Oh bless him. Who's it? It's replacement, and he's obviously. Fair, fair play to you if you've kicked off, because the way that arrived was dangerous, and I think he's kicked off. Oh, Nutella? Yes. Look. <laughs> yes, it is, and they've packaged it properly. Well done. Yeah. Fair play. So that was from Peter, Peter wasn't it? So, yeah, so oh, Peter yeah. sent us some um, Nutella the other day, and fortunately, it came like this. The one bottle was smashed and I cut my thumb on it because I didn't realise it was glass. Um, and Peter's obviously kicked off. We kept the, we kept the package just in case. Um, Good for him because that was not, that was not delivery. Yeah. That was well, the thing is, is the box that this came in was in perfect condition, yeah. which means that this must have been packed broken. So, but anyway, thank you very much, that Peter. Very That's obviously from you, so. We now have more Nutella, more Nutella than we can actually shake a stick at. So, look. how'd you do that? New potatoes. You got a bruise from a new potato. Yeah, but have you seen her, her finger? What she's done today? Oh yeah. What's done your finger? Oh, that's a blister. Oh, that's it. How have you done that? I was cleaning the coffee machine. I was 
put a boiling hot water in metal jugs. I had two in my hands. Not Were you three. dancing at the time? No. Yeah, that's okay. And I filled it up and went, this is getting quite hot. This is getting really hot. This is really hurt my finger. Ow, wow, 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 wow. And I put it down. And I, um, yeah, listen to that. Did that as well today. Um, Wait, what are you wearing? Okay. What are you wearing? My pajamas. You're in I'm pajamas? Rather, I'm actually rather tempted. Like, I love, I, like I say, I literally only wear pajamas. Because I come home, I work, I work in the studio, I come home from work gear. And then get to the okay, idle. Okay, right. Thank you, Peter. That's very kind of you. So, right. I'm assuming now we can bin those because that's got broken. I also like peanut butter. Stop it! Don't send her any peanut butter. Don't send. No, no, no. Stop it! No, 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 no peanut butter. No, get off, get off, get off. Ah, no. I'm a bit concerned that I've just changed the battery in the GoPro. Um, obviously, because the other one was running out, and switched it back on again, and it's showing no files on that SD card. I can't see how changing the battery would wipe the SD card, but why would it now show no files? So I'm really hoping that this bit of video is not the only bit I'm going to capture from the day. Are you come in, pickle. You can come if you want. You come in, come on. You can come if you want. Come on, in. come in. No, okay, we'll stay there. Then. We're just going to go and have a quick wander down the golf course and just look at the grass and see what the ground is like. See, the ground has shrunk. That may need some adjustment. Still secure for a minute. If it stays dry, I'll have to bear that in mind. You come in, come on. All right. I spotted some ragwort out here the other day and I did think about bringing the fork with me now to pull it, but um, I think I might just let it put a bit more energy into the flower and then pull it Hopefully it's got more chance of killing this stuff. Come on you. The cattle have fairly well chewed this off out here now. Um, there's still patches of green around the old muck spots. But uh, I think possibly grain's still a bit hard for a minute. Once we've had a bit of rain, we'll come out with the slitter and we'll slit this. And then maybe after that, we'll put the harrows over it just to pull the thatch out and maybe aerate the ground a bit, ready for the winter months and for next spring. Because uh, time is creeping on. It won't be that long now before we're thinking about bringing cattle in. So I'm really hoping the barn project gets finished. I mean, it might be a case if they've all got to go in the one side to begin with, which would be a pain, because it forced me to use the yards, which I was hoping Hoping we could get away with not using the yards this year because they're still in a bit of a state. I don't know. Uh, we're just waiting on concrete panels. We can't do anything really until they have arrived. When we first bought the golf course a couple of years ago, this was yellow with ragwort. I pulled bags and bags and bags of this stuff. We're never going to get it all straight away because there's one there, look. This one, it's a youngster, not even coming to flower this year. So, but he's got to be pulled. But the idea is, I reckon over five years, if I keep on top of it, he's got to go. And there's a couple of individuals out there. So I can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine plants while I'm pulling. Um, that I'll get done in the next couple of days. If I can get keep on top of the ragwort, hopefully I'll never exterminate it because I know it's in the factory pro, um, uh, grounds, literally a quarter of a mile that way. There's a big factory. They've got lots of grounds, lots of wasteland, and they've always got ragwort out there. So it's due southwest of us. We're always going to cop some seed. So I'm never going to be rid of the stuff. But if I can stay on top of it, 
that's kind of the best I could expect really. Let's go and have a look at our little reserve. Uh, you won't know this because you haven't been down here for a while, but I've been mowing this, coming down with our ride-on mower, and periodically just mowing it, partially because it gets some grass in here, well, and also so we can get in here to come and look at the pond and see what's going on. We've not bought any trail cameras down here for a while. Maybe we'll do that again soon. We don't come in here very often. We kind of leave it to the bugs and the beasties. But just occasionally, nice to come and have a look and see what sign we've got of what's what's going on. Um, the little pond, although it's been ever so dry, has never completely dried up yet. It's come close, um, but we know that the local deer and that are still drinking out of it because of the prints that have been around there. But I've not been here for a week, ten days, as you can tell by the grass. So I wonder if it's dry yet. It won't be long and it'll be full of gun mine. What do you reckon? Nearly. Nearly empty. But if you look at the prints around there, these are roe deer prints, I think, most of those. That could be a little munt jack. That could be a little munt jack. But yeah, most of these, that's quite a fresh one there. Most of this is roe deer. And they've been getting right in there too. I they've been having a bath in there. Um, our frogs, the spawn we put in here early in the year, are probably distributed about all amongst the undergrowth and shrubs and bushes all around here, hopefully fattening themselves up, ready for spawning next spring. So uh, we are kind of hoping that next spring there'll be frog spawning here, but not introduced by me. Well, it was the year earlier that they'll actually breed and come back to the pond. But it is nice to know that it's never actually completely dried up. So we've even got some pond weed in there, which I don't know where that's come from. Looks like a bulrush. That might be a problem. Get too many of them. That could have been from seed from over there. We'll see. Right. Okay. So I've been keeping this area here mown. Partially um, so that if I put a trail camera out here, there's a clear area for live, well, animals to come in and wander around in. But also, um, I'm going to keep this clear. If ever somebody wants to come down and do a bit of wild camping or something, I've got somewhere they can go, sort of family, friends. We've had a few people who have said, oh, can we come down and do a wild camp? Well, I think this is about as good a place as i got as anywhere. What's the blackberries like down here? Not too bad, but a bit, a bit far out of reach. I might actually extend the cleared area back into there later on. I mean, it's coming down with a topper. Uh, but we wanted to do that after all the ground nesting birds and all that was finished. So back in there with a the topper and just clear the back of there again. It was, it was cut two years ago. Um, I don't want it to get completely overgrown. I want areas. There's a fox. I don't know if you caught her. Pretty sure it was her. But uh, she must have been sat down in here. But she's literally, pretty sure it was a she, just crawled up into the top of that bramble up there. So, it's nowhere near my geese and poultry. Perfectly safe. So, oh. I don't know if the camera picked that up because all I saw was her bottom disappearing into the bramble. But, Come on you, come here. I don't want you chasing after that. Right, okay, let's go look at the cow. That's a big old prunus that is. He's actually quite spectacular in the spring when he comes out in flower. It's just like a big white snowball. Um, I was walking up through with my wife the other day and she said, what are you going to do with these trees? 
up for the middle year. They're kind of in the way, and as far as agriculture is concerned, they are right in the way. And my answer was, they're staying put. I'm not taking them down. They're not doing any harm. Um, one of the beauties of this thing, when we bought the golf course, is there is lots and lots of shelter right here for the livestock, whether it's sheep or the cattle. They've got protection from the wind, with the high hedges, they've got protection from the rain, there's always somewhere they can get under cover. And they got most, sometimes most important, well, protection from the sun. So you can see where the cattle have been spending time under here, rubbed the bark. You know, that's probably a lovely place to have a bit of a, bit of a scratch. Some farms have brushes that run off electricity. We have Scott's Pine. And I think if I was given the choice, I'd have a Scott's Pine too. I'd rather grow something than buy something. Lovely evening. I don't know if you can see them in there, but that stream is absolutely alive with juvenile minnows. I'll get the camera as close as I can and see what you can see. But there's about 20 little fish right in front of the camera. So, they... you see them darting about in there? They are tiny, but they're also really, really welcome because if they're in there, it sort of says to me that the water's clean um, and healthy and the ecosystem in there is clean and healthy and they're thriving because there are dozens of them in there. I'd really like to see them. Right, cows, where are they? Right, hello girls, good evening. I like to talk to the cattle. I like them to recognize my voice and me and the dog. So, all right. Good evening ladies, boys and girls. See, they've pretty well chewed this off out here and I kind of want them to finish chewing it off because I would like to put some muck out here. We've got a pile up there that needs doing. Spoke to my neighbour earlier today. Um, he's looking at now ordering next year's supply of uh, fertiliser for the grassland and that. And basically the price he's been quoted today for the granular fertiliser for this, um, it was between 490 and 500 pounds a ton. That's kind of double what it was a couple of years ago. Um, and it's one of those things where I don't know if the farm can really can really afford it. It's we would want four tons minimum just to do the bits we want. So it's two thousand pounds worth of fertilizer. I mean the ground needs it, but I think we're going to have to rely a bit more on the fertilizer that these guys produce and our compost because. That's getting difficult. I can't really justify it. So, and the granular fertilizer as well, it only lasts a couple of weeks and it's gone. Hello, mate. That is steak on the hoof, that is. You knew a handsome chap, eh? So, they're all nice and quiet not being too bothered by the flies. There's a few flies around, but um, not being really, really bothered by them. Another handsome fella there. More steak. Hello, mate, how you doing? All right. There was one out here the other day, number 222, and she was carrying a foot her rear left, that she seems, I saw her again yesterday, and she seemed an awful lot better. Where is she? That's not you. That's not her, that's not her. Oh, I've obviously walked past her. Where is she? It's not you. No, it's not you. 
I just want to see her walk and just see if she's still swinging her hip and carrying her foot because if she gets worse we'd have to consider getting the vet in to have a look thing is they tend to run around sometimes and it could just be she's just twisted something and just sprained and or you know it's a temporary injury but I need cattle on their feet where is she not you it's not you she's one of our older girls not a brown one it's definitely a black one Definitely not you. That's the one we bought off our neighbour. Uh, I don't think so. Is it you? Hello, girl. Yeah. I don't really want to disturb you, but I do actually want to see you get up and walk. Would you mind? Eh? I feel rotten making her get up. Come on. Up you get. Come on. And actually, that's not going to make you get up because you like that, didn't you? Come on. Up you get. Come on. Good girl. Come on. Get the stretch out. She's been there for a while looking at that. Look at the fat balls on there. Oh, she's standing on it, all right. You okay? Go on, just a couple of paces. Just put your sort of see, put some weight on it. Can't be arsed, can you? Still carrying a little bit. It's this foot here. Go on, just put some weight on it. I'm kind of happy with that. I reckon she just sprained it running or something. You could do with a bit of a trim on your toenails. Daft dog. Okay, well, that was the main purpose of my visit down here, was to just check her out, make sure she's okay. But she looks perfectly happy. <laughs> What's she like, eh? Hey, what is she like? You really can't be bothered, can you? Not really. Go on, keep going. I just want to see you walking. Like I say, I'm quite happy with that. That'll do. Yeah, you're not getting your bum scratched. It was just her. Okay, that's it. Come on, you. I've done what I wanted to. She's okay. We're happy. She's happy. They're happy. Time to call it, I think. See you tomorrow.